Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Charlin. I'm starting a little mini series on Parkinson's. And first, we're going to talk about how common Parkinson's disease actually is. Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder that primarily affects movement. It's estimated that about a million people in the United States were living with Parkinson's as of 2021. But it's important to note that how common the problem actually is can change over time due to a variety of factors like population growth and aging and advancements in how we actually make the diagnosis. The risk of Parkinson's, the risk of developing it, increases with age, so it's more common in older individuals. It typically starts around age 60 or older, but it can occur in younger ages as well, and men are slightly more likely to develop Parkinson's than women. A more recent study published in NPJ Parkinson's found that the incidence, the number of new cases per year of Parkinson's disease in the U.S. is actually 50% higher than previous estimates. The new Parkinson's incidence rates total nearly 90,000 diagnoses each year compared to the previous estimate of 60,000 diagnoses annually. The incidence rates are higher in certain geographic regions, specifically the Rust Belt. That's Southern California, Southeastern Texas, Central Pennsylvania, and Florida. Now, the Rust Belt consists of parts of the northeastern and midwestern U.S. with a history of heavy industrial manufacturing. The exact cause of Parkinson's disease is still unknown, but researchers have identified several factors that may contribute to an increased risk of developing the condition. Some of the major factors associated with Parkinson's include, number one, age, and the risk of Parkinson's does increase with age, it most commonly affects individuals over the age of 60, and the risk continues to rise as people get older. Many of you might think that genetics plays a major role, and we'll talk about this more, but certain genetic mutations and variations are associated with an increased risk of Parkinson's disease. It's important to know that these genetic factors are relatively rare and account for a small percentage of cases. How about family history? Having a close relative, such as a parent or sibling with Parkinson's, increases the likelihood of developing the condition, but the majority of cases don't have a clear family history. As I mentioned, men are slightly more likely to develop Parkinson's disease than women, but the reasons for this are not yet fully understood. There have been some papers published that the onset of Parkinson's disease in men may be heralded by a significant drop in the male hormone testosterone. Many of us also think of environmental factors. Exposure to certain environmental factors may play a role in the development of Parkinson's disease. Some studies suggest that prolonged exposure to certain pesticides and herbicides, as well as certain industrial chemicals, may increase the risk. Another important factor is head injuries. Some research suggests that a history of head injuries, particularly particularly repetitive or severe traumatic brain injuries may increase the risk of Parkinson's later in life. It is important to note that having one or more of these risk factors does not necessarily mean that the person will definitely develop Parkinson's disease. And in fact, some people without any known risk factors may still develop the condition. Parkinson's is really likely the result of a combination of genetic and environmental factors and further research is needed to better understand the disease and its causes. Let's talk a little bit more about genetics and Parkinson's disease. The likelihood of one twin developing Parkinson's if their identical twin has it is influenced by genetic factors, but it's certainly not a guarantee. Parkinson's has a genetics component, but it's a complex condition with multiple factors at play. So here's the general overview of genetics and Parkinson's. If you are a identical twin, what we call a monozygotic twin, and one twin has Parkinson's, the risk of the other twin developing Parkinson's is higher than the general population, but it's not 100%. What if we're talking about non-identical twins or just siblings? 
For non-identical twins or siblings of someone with Parkinson's, the risk is lower than that for identical twins. Again, pointing toward some genetic contribution, uh, but it's still somewhat elevated compared to the general population. It's estimated that the risk is about two to 5% higher than the general population. Well, what about the general population? The risk of developing Parkinson's in the general population is actually relatively low with estimates typically around 1% to 2%. Again, these numbers can vary depending on specific genetic and environmental factors. Genetics play a role, but they are not the sole determinant. Environmental factors like exposure to toxins or certain lifestyle choices can also influence the development of Parkinson's disease. Additionally, not all cases of Parkinson's have a strong genetic component. If one twin has been diagnosed with Parkinson's, it is essential for the other twin to be vigilant and aware of potential symptoms. They should consult with a healthcare professional for guidance on monitoring and reducing potential risk factors, early detection and intervention can help manage the condition effectively. How about those lifestyle factors? Sleep, improved sleep quality can have a significant impact on individuals with Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder that affects movement, but it can also lead to a variety of non-motor symptoms, including sleep disturbance. Here are some of the ways in which improved sleep quality can benefit Parkinson's patients. Number one, reducing motor symptoms. Quality sleep can help alleviate some of the motor symptoms of Parkinson's, such as tremor and stiffness. When well-rested, individuals with Parkinson's may experience improved mobility and muscle control. Number two, enhanced cognitive function. Parkinson's disease can affect cognitive function. Improved sleep quality contribute to better cognitive performance, including memory concentration and problem-solving abilities. Number three, mood and emotional well-being. Sleep plays a crucial role in regulating mood. Better sleep can lead to improved emotional well-being, reducing feelings of depression and anxiety that are often associated with Parkinson's disease. Number four, energy levels. Quality sleep can help individuals with Parkinson's feel more energized during the day, which can improve overall quality of life and participation in daily activities. Number five, medication effectiveness. Parkinson's medication may work more effectively with improved sleep patterns consistent sleep can help maintain stable drug levels in the body, ensuring that medications provide the maximum benefit. Number six, reduce risk of falls. Poor sleep can increase the risk of falls for individuals with Parkinson's. Improved sleep quality can enhance balance and coordination, reducing the likelihood of falls and related injuries. Number seven, slowing disease progression. While not a direct cure, better quality sleep may contribute to a healthier overall lifestyle, which could potentially slow the progression of Parkinson's disease and improve long-term outcomes. It's important to note that improving sleep quality for individuals with Parkinson's may require a combination of strategies, including medication adjustment, lifestyle changes, and sleep hygiene practices. Consultation with a healthcare professional, such as a neurologist or a sleep specialist, is advisable to develop a tailored approach to managing sleep disturbance in Parkinson's disease. Next, I'm going to talk about exercise, and then we'll talk about nutrition, and finally, mindfulness and other stress resilience practices, what they are and how they can help people with Parkinson's. I'm Dr. Ken Charlin with Charlin Health and Neurology, the world famous brain tune-up program. I hope you found this video helpful, and I look forward to seeing at least some of you, if not all of you, here in Ozark, Missouri, where we can really roll up our sleeves and get to work and help you improve your Parkinson's disease or other disorders affecting the brain and nervous system. Thank you for your time and attention.